put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Mafia, the City of Lost Heaven, video game review. Taking place in the 1930s, from about 1930 to 1938, including during the era of Prohibition, the Mafia helps keep a steady stream of liquor flowing into the cities and into the veins and bloodstreams. This has you play as Tommy Angelo, I think, who is a taxi driver who unwittingly gets mixed up with the Mafia of Don Salieri and he likes you quite a lot and you also get to see you know, he truly hates Morello, his rival. And right from the start Tommy is not comfortable with the violence so he tries to find solutions to the especially if he's asked to kill someone that he'd really rather not have to kill, he'll try to find a different solution. And this is, of course, something that every, you know, each of these games have to struggle with where you kill a lot of people. You know, a lot of them make them criminals, you know, decidedly bad guys and such. In this, most of the people you kill are in self-defense and or they are criminals or corrupt cops, but you do also kill police and civilians and such. Now, you help the Don in the gang war between him and the other Don, Morello, who is, and, and his mom, and he is a really fun villain. He's like really merciless and he has a short fuse he is clearly the more evil of these two dons but of course what goes up must come down and as powerful as your mob already is a lot of the time the don will start a briefing by saying we have, you know, bad news, everyone. You know, we've been really unlucky, and there's this kind of thing. And a lot of missions will go wrong and such, or, you know, even when you've completed them, something, you know, something won't quite have worked out the way it was supposed to. And this, the thing is that this does not go far enough for it to be tragic. You know, the tone here is romantic and nostalgic, where in something like Cain and Lynch, Dead Men, and also Dog Days, you know, it's through and through dark, gritty, and bleak, and here instead it just gets to be repetitive because it doesn't quite reach the levels of tragedy. You know, in Cain and Lynch, King Lynch is also a video game, the Dead Men, is a video game that really shows that video games don't have to just be entertaining or let the player win or be fun. If you do it right, a tragic story in a game can be just as effective as one where the good guys win. And yeah, in Canaan Lynch, right from the start, you are mowing down groups of cops. You are, you know, betraying old allies and such. It is very clearly, distinctly unpleasant. And the one thing that has you and Cain proceed and, and actually, yeah, go through with all this is to protect his wife and daughter. And 
yeah, you know, he's willing to do a lot of awful things. He has already done a lot of awful things in his life, and now it's to protect them. In the last third or so, this does finally get to be really interesting plot-wise and such. And I'm not going to give away why that is, but yeah, before that, I mean, missions are cool and like, yeah, the plot is fine, but really, this should have started when the Mafia was not strong or it should have had a more gradual rise through the ranks. You do rise through the ranks in this, but it happens really quickly, really early on. And thus, there isn't really anywhere else to go. And that's when you just, yeah, they have a lot of missions that go wrong. And even if that does fit with the realism, it's just not that fun. Like I just said, you can do tragic story, but you have to do different things with it. Cain Lynch Dead Men constantly have you doing different things. Sure, you're trying to get back the the money that you know the the rest of the seven have you know sent you to retrieve. But it's not just over and over. Well, the money wasn't here. What now? You know. Yeah. There's a lot of twists in that game, so I'm not going to give away exactly what, but just, yeah, it it doesn't, there are different reasons why it doesn't work out, and different things done to get the money, and because of that, it keeps you hooked. Now, this has Tommy telling the story to a cop, an Irish cop, I believe, in 38, which works as a framing device and allows him to narrate in past tense, pointing out, you know, various things about the Mafia. You know, in addition to, you know, obviously he's telling this cop everything you play, everything you're doing as Tommy, he's also telling the cop, but it'll also have cutscenes where he goes to the cop and he'll point out this is how the Mafia deals with this and that, and yeah, it's, you know, he'll point out really illogical things about them as well, which is nice and, yeah, like there's, there's one point where it's like the, the two Dons will cry on each other's shoulders, and then the day after, they'll go back to fighting each other. It's, yeah, there's, there's this strong sense of family, but it's also, yeah, it, there's a lot about the Mafia that is self-contradictory. And, yeah, it's, it's an interesting delving into that. And, yeah, this really feels like you're playing a Martin Scorsese film. And then there are the references. The, the references to... Scorsese and, you know, The Godfather and various things, they are way too obvious, way too on the nose. Like, something will literally be called the Scorsese this or that, or the slightly more forgivable Corleone this or that, but straight up name-dropping one of the most influential and interesting directors of mafia films and organized crime films in general just it's it yeah it's too obvious and they keep saying the name you know it's all it's not like just you know we heard from this snitch called Scorsese no 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 it's like all the time and yeah these are just they they don't really work now this works really well as a period piece the story has various twists, and you aren't, some of them you're going to see coming, but the various plot threads that are followed up on, you won't always be able to tell. The, yeah, you know, there are things that work out, and then there are things that turn out to have more, yeah, there, there's more to them than what you maybe thought at first. 
some have called the story cliche and to an extent I think the real issue is that it's fairly typical how these stories go and as such either you stick to that or you you know completely go off in a different direction and the latter just isn't gonna ring true it's it's an issue with trying to tell a real life story a, a story very much based on real life and this is yeah what happens in this game is what happened to the various mafias yeah, the and some have said, you know, this is this is slow and this has a slow start. I'd say, you know, pretty much everything in this is slow. The the plot, the movement, whether on on foot or in car, or shooting. Ultimately, this is more fun to watch than to play. And if you're like thinking, should I buy? Should I watch a let's play? Watch a let's play. When you have completed the campaign, as I have, you will unlock what is called Free Ride Extreme. I have not played that yet, and I will go into why I don't intend to play it at the end of this review, when I'll cover Free Ride and Free Ride Extreme. But the reason that I do this review now, rather than trying to do Free Ride Extreme first, is that I try to base my reviews especially on the story and as far as I can tell Freeride Extreme is not really about that same story it is just yeah Freeride and Freeride Extreme are essentially free roam and in this free roam is separate from the story so and yeah I, I base my reviews on the story itself I try to make sure that the story itself is the last thing I complete so that it can be fresh in my mind when I do these reviews and yeah especially with it when it's something this story driven Tommy is voiced by Paul Sorvino, Sorvino's son Paul Sorvino of course being very known for Goodfellas and a number of the voice actors here are from the Sopranos so yeah we're in good hands as far as that goes the voice acting tends to be great there is some that isn't so very good some have said these characters are kind of cardboard cutouts. I think it's the same issue as with the plot being cliche. It's they're not wrong to make that point and criticism. It's it's just difficult to avoid with something like this. And a game maybe doesn't quite have the same tools as a movie to tell that story in a more engaging way and yeah the, the amount of time you spend around the characters is much greater in a game and even if you don't have them do or say all that much but make that distinct it's still you really notice the where where the character starts and ends begins and ends and in a movie you can really intensely focus on just those few distinct things or if there's a lot more you know you can also spend a long time on them but it's much more control than even something like this and among the characters are Joe Pesci I mean Pauly who's had a tough past and is very aggressive. There's one mission where you're sent in because it's a little bit of a pinprick operation and Pauly would torch the place. So, yeah. And this, like I already mentioned, this is very much about the family, the crime family, and not all of it is biological, but 
you know, the, the first bat you're given belongs to the nephew of the gun guy. The gun guy's name is Vincenzo, and you're on a first name basis with him, and he's always the guy who gives you guns before a mission starts. And you're also on a first name basis with Ralph, or Ralphie, who gives you cars, and each, you know, almost every mission, he'll have you, he'll, he'll grant you a new car, and the great thing is, you get to choose whether to use that car, or to use a different one that he has, or even get one off the street, though I believe you have to leave in one of his cars, but the moment that you've left the basic area of his garage, you can use pretty much any car, except for, of course, the times where you have to use a specific car, but those are much rarer than Grand Theft Auto games, for example. And he'll also, I, I believe he can store 16 total, and he, when you eventually get beyond that amount, and, and this is, you know, among the these can be ones he gives you, but it's also, you know, ones you bring from the outside that can be added to the garage. And once they're in his garage, see, that's that's a really cool thing about his garage. Where in, you know, Grand Theft Auto game is maybe a few vehicles, based on size, maybe motorcycles more of. There are, of course, no motorcycles in this. Yeah, it's, it's only a few in this. It's straight up 16. He has a pretty big garage and he is like a mechanic so yeah and the the issue is of course that when you're picking a car and or when he asks you which you want to discard you just have to pick them you know discard you have to pick them off a menu where it only says the name when you pick them you know, when you choose which to enter, you have to go by appearance, and then when you get into a car, you'll get the name. If you want the actual stats of these cars, you're basically going to have to go through free ride and sit there with a pen and pad of paper. And yeah, that's really annoying. You you kind of wish you could just stand in front of a car and see things like maximum speed and acceleration, because these are hugely different. And you really don't want to be driving around in a car that can't go that fast and or doesn't accelerate because, yeah. And, and you'll also want one with a roof in case you get shot at, you know, rather than a convertible, I guess it's called. I'm not a car person. And, yeah, this is... Basically, you have to try to memorize what they look like and what they're called so you don't accidentally discard the wrong car. And then, yeah, you know, and, and I should also mention, if you're going to go through free ride to test the different cars, yeah, you're actually going to have to hope that they come by or drive around town trying to drive around the city trying to find the car that you want to test. And Yeah. Now, the, actually, I'll, I'll get to that. When, actually, yeah, never mind, I'll cover it before proceeding. Ralphie, the, the way you get new cars, and the reason you can then carjack that same car later on, is that every car has a unique lock which is very useful of way, you know, in, in Grand Theft Auto, if you can steal the car, it's yours. You know, in this, you know, for one thing, it's also as the years progress through the, the campaign, the, the story, more cars become available, of course, and, and better cars become available. The early ones, there are a lot of those that are just slow. And, yeah, he, Ralphie teaches you how to pick the lock, and once you've done that, you know, once you know how to pick the lock of that car, you can steal that car anytime. Ralphie is, has a stammer, and he's called development, developmentally challenged for, 
they don't use that word, but I'm not going to use ableist language. And yeah, there are other, you know, it, the, the game clearly shows how, how different different the, the different classes and you know, cultures and such were you know yeah you could tell which is which very much from right away the there there's you know the rich people quarter with a lot of fancy cars which is fun when you go there to steal a car then there are like you know establishments for only for African Americans, again, not the word they use. The, you know, various Asian places. One of them literally has a, a reassurance that says, "Up to American standards." You know, so so don't worry. And yeah, it it is a little unfortunate also that there are not a lot of African American characters in this. There's one point where there's like a band playing, and some of those are African Americans, but yeah, they just there's not a lot, and and that's of course realistic, but yeah, I'll I'll get more into that. If you have to talk to Vincenzo or Ralphie, the game will make you talk to them. You know, it's not always that they have something for you, but. If they do, you will be made to. You can't start the mission before you talk to them, which is a little annoying. I feel like if you for sure want a, like, let's say, you know, you're going to visit the gun guy by yourself. I, I feel like the, the game could let you start the mission without going to the gun guy because you're going to learn to go to the gun guy by yourself. And... The same for cars. It's just it's kind of awkward how it forces you into it, especially considering that Ralphie is not going to be offended or anything if you don't take the car he just taught you how to pick the lock of. He, you know, you can use the same car over and over again, and it doesn't matter. So, yeah, again, if I feel like people would probably learn how and and what especially makes this annoying is that there's also Lucas who will give you optional side quests in you know in exchange for teaching you how to pick the lock of a car and basically once he's t t told you how to pick that lock he will then he can't give you the car he's not you know it's not like with Ralphie he can tell you where there is a car of that model that you can go steal and yeah and his side quests are entirely optional if if you fail one you won't be made to do it again you can try it again but yeah and that's i feel like they should do it that way with Vincenzo and Ralphie as well instead of the game really feels like it it has very specific ideas what about your, what you're supposed to do which is odd for a game that has such a big city and such freedom in other areas like again you get to pick which of these up to 16 cars you want to use on a mission mostly there are a few missions where you have more than what you don't always you know you don't always carry any allies, but when you do, you really wish you didn't, but I'll get into that. Anyway, sometimes you carry two allies, and the, the other, one of them being Polly, he's the most common one, and the other being Sam. And, yeah, I'm not sure there's that much I could say about Sam. Some really dramatic things do happen with him. Anyway, yeah, when you have to carry both, I didn't really try this, I don't think, but you have to basically have to get a, you know, you can't leave in a four, in a two-seater. You'd have to go with a four-seater. That's pretty much it. There's and, and then there are a few where, you know, well, 
you know, we have to use this truck to transport this or that. So. Now, both Vincenzo and Ralphie are in walking distance from each other and from Don Salieri's bar, which is where you always get briefings. It's also where missions almost always start and usually also where they end. You, you finish the mission by going back to the bar. And, you know, because then you're protected. That's Salieri's... yeah. And not all of these briefings even take place in the back room of the bar. Sometimes they will sit, you know, in view of everyone and, yeah, openly talk about these very criminal matters, which really tells you a lot about how much power the Mafia had back then. This and the second one were very... Actually, hold on. When I should mention also that the the characters in general are quite memorable. I'm not gonna go into too many of them, but yeah, they're they're all quite memorable. And this does go against a few of the mafia like rules and such, among other things, Mafia would typically not kill women, and in this, yeah, sometimes you are asked to do just that, and it's of course to make it more dramatic, it's to say, you know, would would you really kill a woman? And yeah, you probably wouldn't be asked to. This and the second one were very well received critically, and a third is on the way. Now, the, the city that this takes place in, the city of the Lost Heaven, is based on New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago. And this has different weather pat patterns, and, you know, it can be day or night. It can be sunny. It, there, there's this one where there's this really, you know, it starts as just rain, and it develops into a thunderstorm, with lightning off in the distance and such. And it's this really creepy, abandoned, you know, you might be wondering where, what, what location, and the answer you seek is rural. Agrarian, even. It's a farm. And, yeah, the, several of the setups and mission, like, yeah, they're, they're very, very memorable, and this is in part because it can be so controlled, where in Grand Theft Auto, you know, maybe a mission starts during the night or, and then goes to day, and they might not do a lot with the weather specific to the mission. And you can ride a tram as well as these elevated rails. Some, some call this above average, yeah, I'd, I'd go a little further above that, but yeah. I am reviewing the PC version. This is just overflowing with style, and it's, it's intensely slick. And yeah, I already mentioned that it feels like playing a Martin Scorsese film. It, it very much feels like Goodfellas. Now, and others have, some have said this is like Max Payne without the bullet time. That's a quite good comparison. This was clearly a labor of love. This has some bugs, and it's really frustrating when that makes you fail a mission and the like. But failing a mission because of a bug is not that common except for some of the more involved ones. The, the really annoying thing is that you can't always tell that you've run into a bug or if something you did was just wrong by the, the mission standards. This plays like Hitman mixed with San Andreas. 
you know, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas coming out, you know, one year after Hitman and two years before San Andreas. And it, you know, it also one year after Grand Theft Auto 3, but in a lot of ways, this beats that game savagely. It, the, the few things that Grand Theft Auto does have that are, are better is it's more open. The gameplay overall is just more fun, even if, you know, in ways more limited. Like, again, Grand Theft Auto did not have proper third-person shooting before San Andreas. And, yeah, before that, you were just shooting in the general direction. You didn't, you couldn't aim particularly. You couldn't look up and down. You can in this. And, uh, yeah. And the, it has more different, more personality, because it can do more different things. So yeah, overall it's more fun, but this, if it were only more fun, this is an amazing game. It's just, it has, you know, there, there are caveats, which I will get more into. I, and also... This game, for, you know, all the things it does, and all the, you know, the, the games at tops and such, this was delayed by two years, so this could have come out before Grand Theft Auto 3. And as it is, it's just called one of the best Grand Theft Auto 3 clones, which is also true. I will not be pointing out every every time this tops Grand Theft Auto 3 because I'd be repeating myself incessantly and this does things that you know Grand Theft Auto and Hitman do not do in addition to yeah all the things they do that those games do which they, they also don't do everything that those games do but, you know, when, when you have a game that takes different games and puts them together, you'll want that game to still have some... Like, Assassin's Creed, to an extent, is... It's, you know, it's climbing and acrobatics from Prince of Persia, the Ubisoft Prince of Persia games. It's the free roam from Grand Theft Auto. And it's the, you know the assassination and such, especially the up-close stuff from Hitman. But in addition to mixing all these things together, you know, it does things of its own as well. The... Most of what I say is true of the campaign only, not Free Ride or Free Ride Extreme. Of course, discounting things that are, you know, basic elements and mechanics, you know, graphics, shooting, driving, and such. Whenever you're in a car, you have, or at least pretty much whenever, you have a mini radar which highlights cars, cops, trams, enemies, yeah and also shows which direction they're pointing, which really helps you, you know, put some distance between them or, you know, face them in a fight, if that's what you want to do. And when, when you're on foot, you can really miss having this radar, but I'm not entirely sure that's a bad thing. That's, you know, it is in a lot of ways a car game, a driving game, and you know, in 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 Grand Theft Auto, there are also things you maybe miss when you're on foot, and yeah, it's you know, you also have a compass when you when you have objectives, you have a compass that points in the direction, not necessarily the best path, of these objectives. And you're, you're not always told what the limitations and terms of a mission is, of, of objectives, when some of these are really not 
that logical. It's, you know, some of them are, but yeah, some of them you really didn't see. The first time you see the text off map, that doesn't mean you failed or you did something wrong. It just means there's no map for where you're driving now. And it doesn't mean that you'll have too much trouble finding your way, because usually that means that there's only... Usually when you're off the map, it's there's there's only one road and such. You know, just follow the only road. But, yeah, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh crap, did I do something wrong? Just made sure to drive back to where the map was again. But I was still being pointed in the direction that the map, and suddenly the map was gone. And, yeah, the, the game doesn't tell you this when... Other and then other times there are things where it'll say, you know, okay, you should have done this, you didn't, and then you apparently fail. So, yeah. With I've already somewhat mentioned this has full third-person shooter mechanics. You can aim anywhere, you can, you know, you have free look any direction. You can jump and vault in this, although you can't always tell if you can jump over something or vault it, which is really annoying when you're like trying to make an escape and you're like, well, that bush is so short, you know, that I should be able to jump over that easily. And then you try and it doesn't work out. You can roll in this to either side by double tapping the, you know, strafe keys. This, you're going to love this until you realize how, you know, yeah, until you start accidentally doing it all the time. Because you're often trying to very slowly strafe so that you can edge yourself to a good position to shoot from or if you're sneaking trying to avoid being seen by the you know various things like that and when you press the button a few times within a second or so which you often have to you might roll and yeah I, I wish that they would have just put this on the walking key so that you know hold down walk and then double tap there you go because that you wouldn't you're less likely to at least. The the walking, you know, you'll probably you'll spend most of, most of the game running. It's yeah. When you hold down the walking key, you're moving slowly forward. When you're trying to slowly strafe, you'll just be you know tapping the, the strafe key instead. And that, you know, again, because if you're suddenly gonna need to run forwards or backwards, you'll want to be able to, you can always just slowly, you know, just briefly tap forward or backwards, or then use the walking key. You know, you have a walking toggle key that you just hold down. And one that you press to constantly be walking. The gameplay here has not aged as well as that of Grand Theft Auto 3. Fans of this can get very defensive about the quality of this. It can be very dull at times. Aiming is annoying and not fun. I'll get more into why. You... This, this does look better than Grand Theft Auto 3. And the, you know, but not not as funny or as open as it, at least in the campaign. In, in general, not as funny. Now, the, you can, excuse me, you can tell when you can interact with something, which is, excuse me, something that way too few games do. You, you know, you'll always get an exclamation point in the lower left corner when you can do something. And if you can use more than one thing, you'll, you know, you'll get a dialogue box that you choose from. The annoying thing is you'll have to use enter. And 
that would suggest you're using the arrow keys and who uses you know you're you're going with w s a s a d and you know you can also use the the mouse but that again takes you out of it because you're not using the mouse for that otherwise you're using it for looking around you heal either by you know completing a mission or there are also a number of healing you know boxes stationary you can't bring something with you and you know it's very you can't you won't be using this by accident you you have to walk up to this box press use and then you'll you know and these vary from 30 hit points you know you have 100 total 50 hit points and just a full heal the yeah at least one of the bridges, I believe it's just one, raises for boats, which is, you know, really makes chases near it really tense. You know, you have to, you may have to drive a little back, drive around in circles or something. It's, yeah. If the police see you doing something, you know, breaking the law in one way, you know, it, it can be something small. Maybe you ran a red light. Maybe you were speeding. Speed limits, 40 miles per hour and 60 kilometers per hour. So that's annoying, probably realistic. You know, if you do that, they'll just fine you. They're not going to mind if you're driving on the wrong side of the street or driving on the sidewalk, though. If you do something more, they'll try to jail you. And if you really take them off, they will try to shoot you. And this is all clearly marked. Like, you know, if, if they're straight up everyone's looking for you there's a wanted bar and when you're out of their view the wanted bar will slowly decrease and you can often like if if you're if they're right behind you you can't complete a mission often but if they just can't find you you can complete it again once you're in Salieri's you're safe and yeah if you you know that's yeah so yes that's the bar if they're trying to find you it'll be the icon of a fine in the upper you know in the middle of the screen the upper part you know and then there's handcuffs for jail and a 1911 pistol for shooting you and if you are jailed or shot you lose the mission and you have to load and redo it rather than losing weapons or money like in Grand Theft Auto 3 and yeah, Grand Theft Auto well from 3 and onwards it's been too long since I played the first one and you know they will also put up you know spikes to you know yeah to, to destroy the, the tires of your car if you have you know, if to that extent you've angered them. The annoying thing about the cops is they do not respond to AI violence, which means if you're on a chase, you're probably speeding at the very least. If you're shooting at the other guy, that might mean, you know, if they see you with a weapon, that's, yeah. Now, when to, to lose the cops, you can, as already mentioned, you can hide from them and yeah, you know, if you can get put enough distance between you. It, this is especially, this is most easy if it's a cop on foot and you're, you can just drive far enough away. But if they're also driving after you, it becomes a little more difficult. You can, at least if you don't have too many cops after you, kill them. You know, go to a maybe secluded spot so, you know, other cops don't hear the gunfire and so that their the bodies aren't found immediately because if they see the bodies and you they're gonna come after you again 
But yeah, then you can just kill the cops. And they don't have a lot of, you know, they don't have really big weaponry. So yeah, like, like I said, you, it can be really useful to kill cops in this. And there are also times when the game makes you. To win a mission, you will have to kill some cops. You know, not every mission, but certain missions. And clearly some of the cops are old Irish guys, so that's a nice detail. This is a really difficult game. And there, you know, you can pay for a long time and buy a lot for even a tiny mistake. And again, sometimes you won't know what the mistake was. You die too easily. This is old school video game tough. Like, you have to play it in the wrong way. You have to use every exploit. And sometimes you also have to get lucky. But it's worse here because this is not as tight and controlled as old school games are. You know, this has too many random elements. And don't get me wrong, random elements to raise difficulty is an awesome thing. I love the random elements in the first Alien vs. Predator game. Basically for the un uninitiated, if you are if you're going up against aliens, maybe in one place, you know, in one general area, there'll be three aliens on one playthrough, maybe the next playthrough it'll be a you know, Praetorian, you know, a single one you know, because that's roughly how difficult these are to take down and, and such, is the general idea. If you're playing as an alien, you're get going up against, you know, you might face a single soldier with a pulse rifle, or you might face three civilians with, like, Molotovs or something. You know, on different playthroughs, you don't know where the enemy will come from if you face one or several, and, you know, one really powerful one or several less powerful ones and you know and this goes for the entire playthrough the entire level you don't know that is awesome the reason that works is that you're given the tools to deal with the random elements and in this you really can't this is this does the wrong way of making something difficult it's you know it's not just based on the player's skill, but no, you take a ton of damage, bullets and melee hits stun lock you. The the enemies are cheap with you know, they'll they'll often be able to shoot you before you even know that they're there, much less where they are. And their first shot will have impeccable aim. And sometimes, you know, the next several shots as well. Whereas you're, you have trouble aiming because of the ridiculous recoil. And yeah, basically, you know, if you're using a revolver, it'll be about a second between each shot you fire. And that's even if you ignore the recoil and just fire, you know, try to fire faster. Not all the revolvers are like that. And thankfully not all the pistols are like that, but it's still, you know, several of the guns are like this. And sometimes you have to empty a clip into one guy to kill him. We're talking five or six bullets. Even from the thankfully very common 1911 pistol. That's easily the best pistol and one of the best weapons of the game. Because it has almost no recoil and it fires fast. And you can... You can actually aim with it, but when you're dealing with enemies, if they move just a little bit, you, you're probably just going to try to hit them in the upper body or just anywhere in the body. You don't want to go for headshots because if you miss, that's at least one more bullet that the enemy had a chance to fire. Your bullets stun lock them as well. And yeah, it's just... Even, even using the 1911, which of course you can't use all the time, even with that, it's incredibly frustrating, which says nothing of when you're forced to use other guns, especially the slower, also more powerful, but definitely slower, of the revolvers. A 
essentially the enemies, if they're coming one at a time and or are at a distance, so they won't be able to crowd you, you know, then you can deal with them, but too often that just isn't the case. Basically, I think the overall stats are roughly the same, like the enemies have about 100 hit points as well, maybe less, but it should be more, you know, yeah, the, the enemy should be easier to kill than they are, you should be harder to kill than you are. Honestly, a lot of the shooting segments feel like they weren't play tested. And this does actually at the same time do difficult the right way. So I don't know why they couldn't just limit it to that. You know, you have to be sure to save your ammo and get ammo. Keep, you know, make sure that you keep picking up ammo from dead bodies and such. You know, you have to properly aim. You can't just fire, you know, randomly in the basic. You have to take care to aim. You know, you are... You have to reload at the right time, you have to heal and also seek out these healing boxes and you have to play it carefully. Now this game is too realistic and it does what all games that are too realistic do and make you miss the ones that are less realistic. This is very much like real life and the reason we play games is often typically to escape from real life because real life is boring. Not all of it, but even people who love their jobs, love going to school, a lot of the time is just spent getting from one place to another, waiting for something to, to happen, arguing with people you care about. Just, I don't remember who said it. I want to say Hitchcock. Drama is life with the boring parts cut out. Realistic, you know, too realistic media is just life. Now, sometimes it's difficult to use, you know, if you're trying, if you're trying to use different things that are too close to each other, it's difficult to, even with the dialogue box, it's difficult to tell which did I do. Like, let's say a bunch of enemies died in the same place. You can search their bodies you go up and you get a dialogue box and it's you know if it says search body three times you it's difficult to tell and you can keep searching the same body it'll just keep saying nothing once that body has nothing on them and it just feels like I mean this is an issue in a lot of games I realize but it just I feel like there's not it doesn't have to be that complicated it can be different for you know have different keys for the different things like let's say you're trying to pick up a gun from that basic area make it use key and maybe I don't know the fire key or the scrolling through weapons key you know say you're trying to press a button to activate something that's just use say you're trying to search an enemy or interact with an enemy in some way you know use and then holster the gun and this well, fire the gun let's go with that and then make it so that you can like fire you can never fire the gun while you're holding down use make it that but yeah in this you can holster guns now it can be extremely useful to use a car when you're shooting you know you can maybe run over some of the people who you're trying to shoot or and or you can use it for cover you know you'll want to angle it right and you'll want one with a roof because again you might be shot at while you're in the car whether from a different car or from someone on foot and yeah you can take cover behind it but be careful if a lot of enemies are shooting at it and or enemies that have you know bigger guns shoot at it you know it can blow up and for one thing if you're close to it it's gonna blow you up and for another a blown up car does not provide very much cover and if you're not close to other cover, yeah, you just lost your cover. You can usually get an overlay of your objectives almost always. 
though sometimes it won't be very specific and again it won't tell you there, there's one level where it told me I had to kill my target and he was in a car and I was in the car and the first time I tried I managed to block his car with mine you know lock him into a place and then I shot his car until it blew up because the, the guy wasn't getting out I figured he'd get out and then I'd shoot him I tried to shoot him through the car windows that didn't seem to work so I blew up his car nothing happened and then I tried to load and then it turned out I wasn't supposed to kill him in his car I was supposed to follow his car and I don't know why the objectives didn't just say follow him you know try to try to chase him down something like that and yeah sometimes it'll be really vague or tell you something that you're on the way to doing but not tell you what you're supposed to do you, you should really you have to pay close attention to briefings, which is not something that was always the case in games from this era, and certainly aren't today. Now, with... The... When, you know, the different objectives is, you know, are, you know, they include, like, drive from point A to B, point B. Maybe you're involved in a race or a chase. You know, kill this guy, protect this guy, things like that. You know, and in spite of the very varied setups and ideas and such, they come off as very samey because they just don't have that much variety to the gameplay. And that's again where Grand Theft Auto does top this. The way this could have made things more more fair and less you know, less of the bad kind of difficult would be to speed up what you do speed up you know your your cars your guns give you more health and maybe make them more you know make healing boxes more common and at the same time do the opposite for the enemy sometimes you will be set to gather you know protection protection money there are timed objectives, but not too many, and they're basically you you get a stop watch, like a, a pocket watch is the right word, which has a red section between now and when it's you know too late for the, the objectives, rather than a counter in you know minutes and seconds which is nice and realistic and also just yeah a, a good way to show it it's you know I mean you can quickly read a clock as well and it feels like that's what this guy would do you know every time you look at the the pocket watch icon you know yeah the pocket watch on the HUD you know just imagine that Tommy quickly reaches in checks the pocket watch puts it back that makes sense and it appears that an hour of real time is a minute in or other way around an hour of in-game time is a minute in real time the watch is not always present nor is a compass in fact you don't have you don't have a real compass you only ever have the objective arrow compass which can make it difficult to tell where you are especially if you're not like in the city where you can you know use buildings and such to you know figure out where you are and where you're going the map does show which direction you're pointing though two-thirds of the missions are cheap and frustrating because of these cheap enemies and yeah I've already mentioned their aim sometimes they'll 
survive a single shotgun blast at close range, which consider, imagine if, well, yeah, really, if you're using a shotgun against them, you probably want to be quite close, otherwise it's even less likely to work, and yeah, if that first shot doesn't kill them, then while you're reloading, they'll fire shots and again, stun lock you, so yeah. At, there are times where the shotgun seems completely useless because it has to be too you have to be too close you can't be sure it'll work to to kill them with the one shot that you get before they shoot and it's you know in in some ways like that it is very you know max pain one difficult and finally if there's even more than one person there then you're not going to be able to shoot more than one of them before the other is shoot back. You know, sometimes you can shoot a little further, and if there are several, maybe you'll hit more than one. And if you shoot and then get back into cover, you know, that can work. But, yeah, overall, yeah, it's just not good enough to be useful with its current stats. Some have said that they would die on the first enemy and then figure out where, you know, then memorize where he is, then die on the second enemy because they'd be so surprised. I didn't particularly experience that, but then I, right from the start, did play it the wrong way because I have a history of these kinds of games where you have to play it in this kind of way and you have to make, you have to exploit every well, exploit, that you can find. So, you know, you're not running around gunning people down. No, no, no. You just take small steps, and then when you find someone, you shoot them. You know, you fire some shots, get back into cover. Yeah, on and on. And for that, it can. But I can totally see how it happens. And certainly, suddenly, there will be someone behind you. I had missions where I swear people spawned in rooms I had already cleared when I you know, when I was going back through those rooms and they would suddenly appear and just, you know, not like spawn right in front of me or the like, but still. The, I suppose it is also possible that, that was for an earlier version of this or something. The, the, some have also said that, you know, you can't save during missions First of all, you can't do that during Grand Theft Auto, and yeah, it, the the only time that Grand Theft Auto finally got checkpoint saving was Grand Theft Auto 4 The Ballad of Gay Tony, which came out in 2009, I think, 8, 9, or 10, some somewhere around that time. Grand Theft Auto 3 came out in 2001, so it's not like Grand Theft Auto was in any kind of a hurry to give you that. And... But the second thing, this does have checkpoint saving. Again, I can only assume that they were commenting on an earlier version or something. And, you know, I mean, I have a physical copy, so I didn't get, like, one that... And, and I bought it very recently, so for all I know, it's like a re-release or something has been done. I don't know. But, although, you know, if I downloaded it, it would also be... An updated version. It, it might be, at least. I couldn't find this on Steam or GOG.com. I don't know. Maybe there are other services, but I, those are the two I use. But, yeah. And with that said, it's not like it's impossible to find. It's just... It was slightly difficult to find for the PC in at a price I was okay with. So, yeah. I, I paid roughly 10 bucks for this, and that, yeah. I'm not going to pay full price for a game that's over 10 years old. But but yeah, you, you should be able to find it, especially if you're playing it on a console instead of the PC. Now, the... Yeah, the, the checkpoint saving is not common enough, but it does tend to... If you're going from one part of a mission to another. Like, let's say, it'll it'll save between the bar and then, you know, it'll save at the bar when you got in a briefing, then you go to Ralphie and Vincenzo, then you leave that basic area. The moment you drive away from Ralphie's garage and away from the bar, 
it saves so you don't have to redo that again and then if you're told well we have to go to this location it might save when you get there it certainly will save when you've gotten there and then killed the people in the immediate area yeah it it will checkpoint save there are some some missions have like upwards of 10 checkpoint saves over the course of it and that doesn't necessarily mean that the mission will take a long time like if one only has two or three checkpoint saves it doesn't mean that it's you know a third of the length of one that has nine it's just that when you get to a new location when you've accomplished something it might checkpoint save. sometimes it won't it it's definitely not often enough but yeah and the great thing about the checkpoint saving is it store it saves exactly how much life you have which can also annoy you you know you don't get full life by loading the amount of life the guns the ammo often even the cars in the immediate area if you went to that spot in a specific car and then you you know stole a different car or something and you found that well I'd really rather go in the original car if you load that yeah the cars right there for you to take usually and not like all of them. the traffic won't be the same but yeah and this is again that's a big issue I've always had with Grand Theft Auto is other than the car you've placed in the garage and the you know the ammo and the current weapons yeah some things will really have changed and yeah and in this it it really I mean for a while I would use in, in Vice City, especially when I was just playing fun, if I had gotten like a ton of cops after me and I didn't feel like being chased anymore, I would just go save, then load that save game, and the cops are gone. In this, if the cops are after you, if you made a mistake, it's still there. And, and this is what I love, you can redo saves. You can load an earlier level. Like there was one where I, you know, I took Ralphie's car and I was like, oh, okay, sure, why not? And then I found I really wanted, for one thing, one that wasn't a convertible and one that didn't drive so slowly. So I loaded the bar one, went and got a better car from Ralphie's garage. And of course I had to redo those couple of things, but it overwrote that save. So you, you know, you get to do that. It won't only save that the one time. the you can typically skip cutscenes and cutscenes are really nicely done like in the Grand Theft Auto games when I reviewed those I was you know basically I said you know they, they have cutscenes there are cuts and angles not bad because that's how it is in those and it's, you know you wouldn't necessarily expect more from back then this they are cinematic they you really feel like and again similar to Max Payne and Hitman, you really felt like you were watching a movie when these would play, you know. Unfortunately, sometimes they will just keep playing, you know, there'll be several minutes of unbroken cinematics, no gameplay in between. That gets annoying. But again, once you've watched it once, you can skip almost any of them. If you, you know, if you have to, if the cutscene plays again from where you load, you know, usually you can skip it. Almost always skip it. Some have said that this is like 90% driving. That is not, that is way over. Again, I don't know if they were, they were probably exaggerating. I cannot imagine a version of this with 90%. I'd say it's close to 70%. And the rest of the gameplay is divided fine between, you know, there's melee, there's shooting, there's making your way through an area and maybe searching for a specific thing, there's running after people, there's beating people up for information and such. It's very nicely divided, but it would be nice if the driving wasn't such a big part of it still. And of course, the moment that you're shooting in a mission, it's cheap. So, yeah. This has a great tutorial. It's 20 minutes. You can replay it any time. I don't think you even have to play it if you don't want to. And it'll teach you the basics. And some of these are really, you know, if you played third-person shooter, yeah, you, you know, they won't surprise you. It's just, you know, this is how you shoot and such. But it is also, like, 
you know, you want a gun in Grand Theft Auto, you just walk over that gun, you'll pick it up. In this, you actually have to use the use key. And again, you can holster weapons. And if the cops see you with a weapon that isn't like a bat, they're gonna come after you. So, yeah, again, you know, very hitman. The um, there's one mission where someone complains, you know, they were almost as as attacked, and you assaulted at assacked, and the you know they they you you protect them, of course, and they're like, what you know, who are these weird clowns? And you know, not everybody's into ICP. I'm sure not. The you are not given enough guns by Vincenzo. There, the amount of guns total is not bad, especially that if you're using them right, you won't necessarily run out of ammo as long as you're hitting enemies with most of your bullets. Like, you know, they the enemy will use several different kinds of guns. And you can pick up more bullets from their guns. And also, like, let's say you take on five guys that have the same gun. As long as you had a good amount of bullets for that gun, and you had that gun already, you can more or less empty that gun and just pick theirs up. Although, do note that if they emptied their gun before you killed them, the gun is going to be empty, and they might not have any spare clips that you can pick up. I'm not entirely sure, actually, that you can pick up their spare clips, but they will have some for their own purposes. Th there's one mission where you're sent into a hotel, and you don't necessarily know how many people are in there. You're sent to specifically kill one person. You're given a single handgun, and not even full ammo for it. That's just ridiculous. And again, this is where I feel like the game maybe should have you, you know, do that yourself. Or maybe maybe have you ask, could I have one of these? Even if he mostly said no, if it didn't, you know, if the developers didn't want you to have that gun, I would still like the option. Or maybe it would be sort of grayed out. But it would just, just Tommy going in there and saying, I have to hit a hotel. We don't know how many guys. Okay, here's a single gun and two or three clips. It's just, yeah. Pretty ridiculous. There are a couple of Hollywood action scenes where, like, you're blowing up a building and he'll do a running jump out of a window and slow motion and such. And these really don't go with the tone. Neither do the credits, which run to a hip hop track. I, I couldn't make this up if I tried. It's fairly rare that you shoot from a car driven by somebody else, and there's also hardly any stealth in this, which is really too bad, because the stealth works. It's like thief, discount thief or something, thief light. You know, you might have to get somebody else into a building, and you can tell them follow or stop by, you, by pressing use on them, and if you crouch so will he. You can't get him to walk. He will run, even if you walk. But you can get him to crouch, and he'll walk directly behind you. He won't wander. And, yeah, though he'll also stay completely in place if you just tell him, you know, to not to follow you. And that's, you know, that's the, that's what we usually happen with that. And he can't defend himself, of course. And, you know, it's stealth. Your, your guns aren't stealth. You can maybe knock someone out if you have a bat, and you can stand directly behind them, having not been seen by them, and you charge up the bat. Then you can knock them out. But then you also have to worry about that body being found, and, yeah, you can't move bodies in this. The basic idea is get out of that area before someone sees, or deal with the people who see, and or the cops. You several times are sent to kill someone in a very public place, you know, it sends a message. And that's easy enough to say for, you know, for the Don to tell you to do, but you also then have to, you're, you're the one who has to escape afterwards. So, yeah, but that also, you know, it can be cheap, but it's also not bad, you know. It again, you're no longer just 
going from one place to another or looking around for a certain thing. You know, it yeah, it it varies the the situations you're in fairly decently. It's just that those situations are not distinct enough because of how tight and linear and how much it keeps to just the, the Mafia thing. Like, in Grand Theft Auto, you're also just rising through the ranks of organized crime, but you'll get to, you know, Molotov homeless people or blow up cars and such, and they won't mind, so, yeah. I mean, in this, you can blow up cars, you can kill cops and such, but you only have those few guns to do it with. There's one part where a, you know, one of the mafia people say, you know, he's so hungry he could eat a horse, and I figure, you know, he can get the meat raw if he just takes off another Don. You know, a, don a Don from one of the other families. There's one mission where you're supposed to kill a guy, and he just keeps getting lucky, and it's so cleverly done because everything that happens is something that you could imagine happening. Like, at one point, a Tommy gun jams. They were notorious for jamming. The the wrong person might get into the car that you just wired a bomb to, you know, and it's just, it's so much fun. Like, it, it could be, it so easily could be really annoying for the, you know, to have to over and over just... <laughs> try to kill the same guy, and it's like, oh, they have to, but after each failed attempt, it will save, and then you have to do another, and it's just, it was really engaging, because it was so surprising, and the different ways were, were fun, you know, very nice, creative ways sometimes, and yeah, it was just, you really did not know how long the mission would turn out to be, and what the next how he would survive the next attempt and such. And this, that mission particularly did not take too long between checkpoint saves and was not too frustrating between difficult, between these different saves. The... The graphics are great and have aged incredibly well. This has highly articulated faces with, you know, expressions, the eyes. Tobacco smoke and glasses look amazing. Like, you really feel like they're practically real. And, you know, the game isn't fully photorealistic. That wasn't possible back when this was made. But those, you know, yeah. Tobacco smoke and glasses get extremely close to that. Now, <laughs> dialogue is synced up perfectly well, but perfectly, but the mouths never open quite enough for them to be saying these things. It looks like everybody is a ventriloquist and or a ventriloquist puppet. Dummy? Something like that. And there are some static textures, like some a person's suit might be all one texture and such. And some of these textures do look great, some of them really don't. This, I could get this running in 1920-1080 resolution, you know, so it, yeah, and it ran smoothly on my, you know, new graphics card, and yeah, I could, you know, put all of the different, all the graphic settings, you know, take them right to the top, and yeah, in general, it could take advantage of the newer tech, so again, I, I don't know if it's a re-release or something, but yeah, it, I can't remember the last time I managed to play a game that was anywhere near this old, anywhere near this well, without having to go for all kinds of you know, I didn't have to fiddle around with the settings, and I mean, it ran smoothly on Windows 7. I didn't have to tell it, you know, compatibility, compatibility or anything. The HUD is very large and takes getting used, even for back then. There's a lot on it. 
the music is great really you know sets the atmosphere and mood and you know does this one on foot in intense situations it's very actiony and you know you'll get classy and instrumental on the radio and such you know there's yeah instrumental not a lot of singing you know not a lot of intelligible words and no real intelligible words certainly and there's only the one channel on the radio but it and sometimes you'll hear radio music on foot which you know that's the choice you have to make whether it's not you know whether there's not really music that's something every open world game with a vehicle and a, thus a radio and or a radio will you know deal with and the the music will vary based on where you are you know little italy chinatown you can very much tell by the music when you've you know left an area and, and or entered one you can you can use the clutch to put a roof on the the speed you're driving which can be useful instead of always using like reverse backing up kind of thing to slow down because yeah in any faster car that especially those that accelerate you're going to have to constantly watch the speed you're going for that and you can fire a uh, you know at least a pistol from even your own driver's seat sometimes you do get to fire a tommy gun from if you're a passenger so that's a lot of fun very rarely though sadly but yeah you can always fire a pistol from the driver's seat to the you know you're sitting in the right front seat so you can only left front seat so you can only fire left of course and you know the AI can pretty much always fire from a car with whatever gun they have and when you even bring out a gun even before you start getting ready to shoot and you can tell you can't shoot if there isn't a you know what's it called crosshair and do note that the crosshairs only show where you can shoot if you're pointing to the left of the vehicle otherwise yeah, you can't shoot in that direction, and he just won't fire at all when you press the trigger. You get a 360-ish camera with, you know, whenever you're driving and have a gun at least out. Again, without necessarily being ready to fire it. And this is very much a driving game with all the, you know, all the stats for that kind of thing. So yeah you know speed gears you can switch gears manually you can thankfully also have them on automatic you know various things they start up kinda of slow there was one point where I actually ran out of gas thankfully only the one time because at that point it's like okay there's a limit to how realistic you should go I really don't want to run out of gas during a, a chase you know I don't I think it was a car I carjacked, not something that I was given for the mission, but it's still, that's just, that goes too far. You can carjack pretty much all the time, just only cars that you've learned how to pick the locks of. You can look to the, you know, either side or behind you with pressing the correct keys, you know, like Grand Theft Auto 3. There are six different camera angles, including a few for third person perspective one that where the camera is basically stuck to the back of the car so when you make turns it'll follow completely and one where it's a bit looser so you'll make a turn and it'll slowly follow and that can be really useful for getting your bearings getting a good idea of where are the other people in this you know where are they in relation to me And the you know this also includes a few first-person perspectives, including you know one that's literally right on the front of I guess the front bumper or whatever. And when you back up, it will kind of look behind you, kind of sorta, and it's really frustrating. It's a really bad way to do it. The cars handle very smoothly. You do have to get slightly used to how that works though 
and if you're driving into a fire hydrant or a trash can, you might knock them over. There are three different revolvers, a regular shotgun and a sawn-off one, a rifle which occasionally, rarely, gets a scope. Oh, it's not quite the same rifle, but yeah. A crowbar, a knife, you can use your bare fists, and brass knuckles, and there's, of course, a Tommy gun. You can charge any melee. You you know, I don't know if you can knock out anyone with, with anything other than a bat. And yeah. You know, otherwise you're I don't know, I guess beating them to death or beating them until they pass out anyway, but I don't know if there's any other fast way to do it. And it does, it has more than one animation, which again, really was not, you could not expect that of every game from back then. But, you know, he'll hit from either side or the like, you know, give a little bit more of a wallop or whatever. And you, you know, if you are, when you are melee fighting, you will want to circle strafe. It's again, you know, they'll stun lock you, and there are more of them, and if they have, they don't necessarily have as much health as you do, but they have a lot. And that is, yeah, it's, it's frustrating to have to constantly circle strafe and back up, and yeah. And frankly, you won't charge up your weapons, your, your melee attacks very much if you've already been spotted. So unless you're beating information out of someone. And in that case, you really, really don't want to be... You don't want to be standing. You, you want to be ready to run. And you don't want to cease to stun lock them because they run faster than you if they're wounded and they will run right into a cop or the like. They might also stop fairly close, but yeah, you're not always that doesn't always happen. You can holster you can always bring up your empty hands. Again, you know, even if you have brass knuckles, you can say, I want to fight with my bare fists. You can't hide just anything though. You can hide one large weapon in your coat. And you can carry another large weapon in your hands and then you can hide five smaller weapons. But, yeah, if you have two large weapons, you don't want to go near cops because they will spot the weapon immediately and they won't like that very much. And the large weapons, of course, include the shotgun, the Tommy gun. I think the sawn off somewhat... I, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think it quite counts as one of the smaller ones. Those are just the pistols. And there is a little ammo that is unique, so that's very nice. And, you know, you can scroll, the gun, scroll through the guns with the mouse wheel. Whenever you reload, you toss the empty clip away, with, you know, if you are reloading, not... yeah. And the that means that if you, you really want to count each bullet and really be sure, you know, is this the right time to throw away a few bullets? Do, should I rather have, you know, yeah. And I think the, the shotguns, it's not quite, because those are just shells, you know. You're just putting in an additional amount of shells. You don't have proper a proper cover mechanic that wasn't common back then. I'm not sure much existed back when this came out. You have to kind of pretend there is. You know, you can crouch, and like I said, you can you know you can circle strafe. You can strafe and just stick your head out a little bit and such. The really annoying thing is that if you're crouching and you're trying to shoot, even if you aim above the thing that you're crouching behind, you might just hit that and won't necessarily be able to tell all the time. And sometimes you have to aim slightly above the enemy to, to properly hit them and 
yeah. But but yeah, it's a good idea to like have a wall, you know, get out, shoot, get back behind the wall while they're stun locked, and yeah. There are too few types of guns and gameplay situations because this is so specific. It is such a limiting vision as 1930s Chicago, where Grand Theft Auto is set in the modern day. Each Grand Theft Auto I've played. And, you know, in addition to, you know, regular modern weaponry, you know, this, you know, you could say, you know, the Tommy gun, is it an assault rifle? Is it a submachine gun? It's somewhere in between, you know. In Grand Theft Auto, you know, you you can have a submachine gun, you can have a, an assault rifle, you can have a pistol, you know, all these different kinds, and you can get, you know, some military hardware, like a RPG or a tank. Sure, you might have to fight for them, but you can get them. And in this, just not, you know, Grand Theft Auto just has more to play with. This lacks, you know, big guns, and the the throwables are rare and frankly boring. You know, because again, also bigger a bigger gun in Grand Theft Auto might be, you know, a flamethrower or something. That's awesome. There's a ton of fun to be had with that. But in this, the biggest gun you have is the Tommy gun, and that's pretty awesome common too. You know, it's useful. And the shotgun, of course, is heavy, but yeah. And I've already mentioned, you know, the I've already mentioned why the shotgun isn't awesome. This you know has flaws. The Tommy gun has ridiculous recoil. I mean you can lower the gun while you're shooting, but it's still just yeah, they went way out with with recoil in this. You know, I mean even IO Interactive wouldn't go quite this far. Oh, okay, that's a straight up lie. But IO Interactive games are also frustrating because of that. You know, outside of the plot, there just isn't that much to this. You know, there are too few ethnicities, too few distinct cultures. You never get to fly or sail. I already mentioned, you know, only. The only thing you can you know you can drive yourself is a car, not a motorcycle, you know. Just yeah, and the cars aren't that distinctly. You know, you don't get to drive this big, huge truck. At least not in the campaign. Friendly AI is straight up suicidal, even for escort missions, even for back then. And, you know, on the plus side, you know, others have already pointed out, you know, I didn't really too often have them, you know, stand in front, you know, stand in the road and just get hit by a car. But, yeah, they run straight out of cover and just shoot slow, they don't run out of cover and stand there and reload. It's actually extremely impressive that they don't die much faster than they do. But on the plus side about the AI and this, and I love this and I really wish, I, I want this in more open world games with cars. I want this in a Grand Theft Auto game. If you get out of your car, if there are friendly AI in that car, they will probably get out with you. You know, again, this is unless you have to stay in that car, unless you, you know, still have to make your way a, a bit and something, you know, and you can carjack and they will get into that car with you. And so you can switch cars in the middle of something like that. And it just, it just works. And that just, that's too rare in more recent, you know, in, in, yeah, Grand Theft Auto games in general, and, you know, this also doesn't let you, you know, just tell them, now shoot, don't shoot, shoot that guy, you know, or drive me from here to there and I'll shoot. I wouldn't expect that from a game this old either. I do think it's, I think it should be possible in Just Cause 3, just putting that out there. But yeah, and, and enemies might do the same. If you're involved in a chase, if they're if you 
if you're trying to drive away from them and they, you know, they, they're in their car, you're in your car, try to get out of the car. They might too, and you can shoot them right there instead of having to deal with the car, because the car, if you can only fire a pistol only to the left side and you have to drive fast to get away from them and all this and that, yeah, if you get out of your car and your allies do, and they do, you can fix it right there sometimes. And at the same time, if you're, you know, shooting and then you get into a car, enemy AI might also get into a car and they'll try to, you know, chase you down and such, which also sometimes means it's slightly more difficult to run them over. That's one of the best things about this. And I really hope more games do this because you can have a ton of fun with that. But, you know, I didn't really try that in free ride, but I can imagine that will, you know, it would do that there as well. But yeah, I, I just, I love that. It's, in, instead of, you know, just failing you and saying, well, what are you doing? You have to be chased. What are you doing? You have to, you know, shoot them while on foot. No, no, no. It's, you know, if they're not near a car and you get in yours, you can run them down or they might take a while before they get into their car. And, but at the same time, they will try to keep, you know, get you, keep trying to get you. The, there, there are times where a strange solution to um, mission objective works, and then there are other times where you try what seems to be a strange solution and it really won't work at all. And again, it just, you kind of wish that you could tell what the, the terms are without just trying over and over and hitting your head on that wall. The... <laughs> The enemy AI sometimes have extra guns, like if they keep, if they might empty a Tommy gun or a shotgun towards you without, you know, without killing you, and they'll bring up like a revolver or something, and this is also, you can pick up that extra gun, that's why you want to search bodies, you know, because the gun will have fallen out of their hand, and you can pick that up separate, you, you do pick that up separate, but yeah, you can shoot, and you know, sometimes I'll say nothing found, but often they will have a small revolver, and yeah, you can fire off a bunch of shots from that full, small revolver, kill a bunch of enemies, then go around checking bodies and refill the ammo for it. That's really cool. And that one also isn't too crazy with recoil, although it's also really not very powerful. So you want to make sure that as many bullets from it as possible go in the upper torso rather than just hitting their body. And some of the enemies are dogs, which isn't too bad. And they'll, you know, they'll come and bite you. And you can, I think you can use melee. I mostly used guns. And yeah, I, you know, something I would never do in real life, even to protect myself probably. But yeah, in, in old school, tough gaming games and war, all is fair. And the while the city is feels alive, the environments of it are kind of bland. You can almost always check the map, and it'll have the names of the overall sections, like Newark. New Ark, it's specifically separated. I'm pretty sure it's not today, but you know, and again, Little Italy and Hoboken and such, Chinatown, and the you know, the, the elevated rail train will have specific stops along the way, you know, stations, and those will be highlighted on the map as long as well as its route and the tram route, but the tram less so has stations, you know, you can't get on the elevator rail if you're not at the station and it's not in front of you and not stopped, but the tram is a bit, you know, you can get on that a bunch of places, so yeah. And the map will also have an objective arrow, or if you're close enough for the map to show the objective, it'll have a marker and it's an overlay that moves as you do rather so you can't see the whole thing at any one point but yeah it moves with you so you can 
yeah, it, it's extremely useful in finding your way and such. And yeah, this is, I, I um, yeah, I hope more games do this. Now, among the areas are a, an airport where what looks like the Hindenburg is parked, a, a museum, a church, a hotel, and more. The, the climax is actually set in this art gallery where, you know, as you, you know, take each other apart with bullets, you might also hit art, and it's a nice contrast and kind of all this blood on art pieces and you know the 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 floor of this museum and you know, art gallery it really it's it's kind of the mafia lifestyle in a single image you know high you know high class upper class and and fancy and sophisticated but bloody and violent and the two can't be kept separate it's it's a really nice image and just again in general the mission setups the if you don't mind what I you know I've described the the gameplay and the limitations of this if you don't mind the the various frustrations here there's a lot here that's amazing the the missions are very distinct in spite of not having that much that many different things to to have you do and such and yeah the the areas are great you know very nicely done and they all fit into this world that the game creates as limiting as it is it's incredible how far they did manage to push it because the, the game doesn't feel too long or too short the you know the pacing is slightly off on the the story because it starts with you already you know you you rise to the, through the ranks of the mafia really quickly and the mafia has a lot of power even when it starts like i said it's only the last third or so that it really gets you know very compelling but the missions along the way are still compelling even if you do have to listen to a lot of well we've had a lot of bad luck and what you just did didn't quite work as well as it should have and so on and so forth Free ride is there right from the start, but you unlock more as you play. And right from the start, I'm pretty sure you can unlock six cars, six different cars. There are two revolvers, and the you also start with the 1911, the Sonoff, and the Tommy gun. So, you know, you can't necessarily hide everything that you have, but yeah, you can go to town immediately. And as you know, where the where the main game is very linear and goes for atmosphere, realism, and a serious tone over the crazy sandbox that is GTA, you know, which is more open, less controlled, and just you know, the the more open a game is, I would say, the less it is in control of the atmosphere that's also true of you know this Alan Wake and Max Payne choose atmosphere and linearity over more open you know game they're they're all very linear but yeah and yeah in free ride it is much more open it is you do have genuine free roam now since there are no missions you know i mentioned before that in the campaign, it's purely, you know, when one mission ends, the next one starts. There's no, you can't do anything in between, basically. Uh, you know, maybe a side quest, but then the mission hasn't fully ended yet. And, yeah, so it, it always saves in connection with a mission. So, you might be wondering, you know, how would you save in Freeride? You know, how, how would the game save in Freeride? Can it? Okay, I'll stop being rude. You save if you have two grand and you go to Salieri's bar, which is clearly marked on the map. 
and that's yeah that's two grand per save so yeah but you can load this one anytime you can also you can directly load you know if you're done playing free ride you can directly load you know a mission again if you want to do that and vice versa and free ride is a great place to learn what the city looks like and test out different things and just practice you know the game you earn money by killing mobsters blowing up cars speeding and if you rob you know if you carjack a taxi you can do taxi missions now how you how you find the mobsters is they all driving these fancy cars I'm not sure if it's more than one of the different ones but yeah and they will you know they won't hurt you until you attack them but then they will get out of the car and they will have Tommy guns so yeah and you can spend money healing or buying guns and free ride extreme is the same as free ride except adding stunt jumps and removing cops and it has side missions which range from the trivial as you know delivering a package to the ridiculous such as hunting ufos and reenacting speed and the the thing is as you know part of the reason that i'm not going to be doing free ride extreme and some people are going to say that this is an incomplete review i completely agree with that and some people are going to be really bothered by that and i have to tell you what i tell my slow blackjack dealer deal the with without you know as far as i can tell saving in free ride extreme and even if i'm wrong about this i'm not going to play it saving free ride extreme is only at the bar which means you have to complete the entire mission no matter how much trouble you might have with it before you can save and then you still have to make it back you know this is grand theft auto style and that's great for grand theft auto but this game is so difficult and so cheaply difficult that i really wouldn't want that especially if missions are as tough as the campaign and if i have to make money to buy healing guns and everything that's just yeah i i don't see myself doing that with a game that's this cheaply difficult and yeah now i mentioned throwables this has both grenades and molotovs neither of which the mafia would use during the depression the you know yeah it's just not their style and this has i mean this has some great you know really this is what the mafia would do kind of things there's this bit where like four or five guys get out of you know cars in front of this restaurant and then they stand side by side and you know fire their tommy guns into the restaurant to kill someone because that's what they would do you know but and, and molotovs weren't used in the u.s until much later i'm pretty sure i researched it slightly this took me 19 and a half hours to complete the campaign and that part of that is redoing stuff because i got killed or the like and spending time figuring out what the objectives really meant and you know things like that so some are going to take longer some are going to take less time the game has dozens of different cars and i fully respect their devotion to putting I, yeah i believe it's in total it's 51 in the main game and then 19 bonus ones in free ride extreme and I fully respect their desire to put that many different ones, and they're clearly, they put a lot of effort into this, but the slowest ones should have been sped up or eliminated because they're worthless, and they're just in the way. You carjack something you think is going to be fast, and it's not because how are you, maybe it's just me. I can't tell 51 different cars apart. I cannot, especially not when it's that important and such again maybe if you're a car guy this game is also much easier if you already know how to drive because again you know i mean you're not gonna you don't have to switch the gears manually 
but using the clutch and knowing how the car is gonna start, how long you have to, do, you know, these things, yeah, very, very useful for figuring out. And the physics of the cars are great, but too rarely seen. Basically, you can take the, you know, the car can be slowly destroyed by each separate, you know, part. And this is also something that's more, you know, that does happen today, but it was very impressive for back then. But you don't see enough of it because either the car is whole or it's blown up or it just has some like bullet holes and such. You just don't, yeah, you don't notice it enough. And that's, that's really too bad because they clearly put a lot of effort into it. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.